Hey, Steven here from The Trading Channel, and I have a question for you. Have you ever felt like you were on the edge of a cliff? Like you were one false move away from completely blowing your trading account? If so, don't worry, you're not alone. I've been there too, and I know of plenty of traders that are there right now. And the reason for this is because of one very important skill that can either land you as another number in statistic of 95% of traders that either give up on trading or completely blow their accounts or keep you out of becoming another number in that statistic. And what this one important skill is, is risk management. Now, a lot of traders tend to think that risk management is some super complicated subject, when in reality, you only need to know three things in order to master risk management. Number one, you need to understand your own risk tolerance. Number two, you need to understand and implement stop loss orders. And number three, you need to understand how to calculate your position size very quickly. Now in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to do all three of those in the hopes that by the end of this video, you will have the ability to master risk management for yourself. So if that sounds good, go ahead and click that like button for me. Go ahead and subscribe if you're new to the channel and I'll see you on the other side of the intro and disclaimer. Welcome back and let's get started with number one, which is risk tolerance. For the scope of this video, risk tolerance is going to refer to the amount of money you are willing to risk on one specific trade. Let me explain that a little bit further. So anytime you place a trade in markets, you are exposing yourself to a specific amount of risk. This amount of risk is determined by two factors. Those two factors are the amount of pips down to your stop loss order. I always suggest using stop losses. I'll explain that on number two, but down to your stop loss order, the amount of pips plus your position size. These are the two things that are going to determine how much money you have at risk at any one specific time on a specific trade. Again, I'll go over that really quickly. Our risk, the amount of money we are accepting as a possible loss on a trade is known as risk tolerance. The risk on a specific trade is determined by the amount of pips down to our stop loss order and our position size. This number, whatever it is for you, again, is called risk tolerance. And we need that number down to your stop loss to be less than or equal to your specific risk tolerance. You never want to risk more than you are comfortable losing on a specific trade. As traders, we all lose money at times. We all lose trades at times. That's just a part of trading. Even professional traders have plenty of losses. So what risk tolerance is, is a number that we are comfortable losing, an amount of money or a percentage of our account we are comfortable losing when we have those inevitable losses. So just to give you an example of this, I personally use percentages instead of just whole numbers as dollars. And let's just for easy math, assume that I had a 10 K account. Okay. So I have a $10,000 account for me personally. This is in no way a suggestion for you. Your own risk tolerance will be determined by you and you alone. There's no way for anyone to tell you what you are comfortable risking. But for me, it's between 1% and 3% of my total account value. Again, if I had a 10 K account, that would mean that for every trade, I placed while my account was at $10,000, I would be risking between $100 and $300. So my risk right here, right? If I'm risking between 1% and 3% of my 10K account is going to be between $100 and $300. So for me personally, this is my risk tolerance and every single trade that I place needs to be at or under this risk tolerance, my risk tolerance being 300 bucks on a $10,000 account or 3% of my total account value is always my risk tolerance. So as long as my risk on a specific trade determined by the pips down to my stop loss and my position size keeps me at under a $300 risk on a $10,000 account or 3% of my total account value, then I am following my risk tolerance rules. Don't let this confuse you. If you're new, I'm going to show you a very fast and very simple way to calculate the amount of money you are risking per trade 
momentarily. And what this does is keeps us from letting emotions get in the way. If you're risking more than you're willing to lose on a specific trade, or God forbid you're not using a stop loss at all, so your risk is unlimited, what happens is emotions tend to control the outcome of those trades. If you're not using a stop loss at all, essentially you'll get out of that trade whenever you are so uncomfortable that you cannot take it anymore. And if you are using a stop loss, but you're risking more than you're comfortable with, more than what your risk tolerance allows, then what will happen is you'll end up moving that stop loss down because you're so uncomfortable with losing, or you'll get out of the trade before a logical area to get out where your stop loss is because you're already losing too much money. Either way, what you'll be doing is trading based on emotions, which is a great way to blow your account and a terrible way to try to become a professional and profitable trader. You'll never be consistently profitable if you're trading based on emotions. So understanding and implementing risk tolerance into your risk management plan is one of the main ways we disregard those emotions because we're only trading with a risk that we are comfortable with. Let's move on now to number two, where I'll explain what stop losses are and how to use them correctly. Stop loss orders are extremely simple. What we're doing with a stop loss, let's say we have a buy trade and you bought in here at this blue line. What you wanna do at that point is pick a logical place in the market where you know you're wrong about a trade. So let's say we bought in here, a logical place would be below the previous swing low for us to go, okay, well, if we're coming all the way down here, getting below this previous swing low, we're probably not gonna end up making new highs. So that would be a logical place to place an order. So we bought in here, we may decide to put a stop loss right below this swing low. So all we need in order to place a stop loss order is to know the price of that. So I just put a horizontal line on the chart and it shows the price of 0.8789. This would be the point I know I'm wrong, a logical place to place a stop loss order. So in order to do that, any trading platform should give you the option of placing a stop loss order if your brokerage doesn't allow you to do that, you probably need to change brokers. But in order to do that, it's very simple. Go to your order form, wherever that is, here's mine. You're gonna to wanna to place your trade, whatever the trade is, let's pretend it's a market order. You're gonna to wanna to choose to place a stop loss and you're either gonna to wanna to place that stop loss based on the amount of pips, which you can see whenever I hover over this red thing, it says 72 pips here. So the amount of pips would be 72 in this case or you can do it by price. As you can see right here, price, I can do the stop loss as 0 0.8789, 0 0.8789. So now if I was to press buy, what would automatically happen is I would open up a buy trade and automatically I would have a stop loss order in place right here at our red line. That's as easy as it is to place a stop loss order, so nothing too complicated there. And for a short trade, it would be exactly the opposite. If you were going short or selling the market, you would want your stop loss to be above price at a logical area that makes sense to tell you you're wrong about a trade and it'll be a certain amount of pips away, right? Well, that certain amount of pips, in this case, it was 72, combined with your risk tolerance number, that you've decided on is what is going to help us determine the position size we should use. And what I'm gonna do right now is explain to you a very simple formula where you can actually determine the position size you need to use in order to make your stop loss equal to your own risk tolerance, whatever that is, using a very simple, easy and fast formula. So let's check out how to calculate your position size. Before we talk about the formula itself, we're gonna to use to calculate the position size we need in order to equal our risk tolerance on each trade, we're gonna need this table right here. So feel free to go ahead and write this down until you memorize it. Eventually you'll have it memorized and you'll be able to calculate your position size in seconds. It is super easy once you have this written down, we will now go through it. I'll explain what this is. What you see right here, PS, is your position size. This is the amount of units you decide to trade with. It's your actual position size. LPP stands for losses in dollars per pip. So for each pip that markets move with what is known as a micro lot, which is 1,000 units of currency, that means you will be losing, if prices are dropping, 10 cents per pip. Let's go through that one more time. A micro lot is 1,000 units of currency. If you trade with 1,000 units of currency as your position size and price drops one pip, that means you have lost 10 
cents. And this table is a general rule of thumb. There will be certain currency pairs that are slightly different, but again, this is a generalization and a good general place to determine your position size really quickly. Let's move on to a mini lot. A mini lot is 10,000 units of currency, so your position size is 10,000 units. When that's the case, every pip the market moves is worth $1. So if you place a trade with 10,000 units of currency, or a mini lot and price moves down one bit, how many dollars did you lose? In most cases, that's gonna be one dollar. The cool thing about all these is your brokerage should not only allow you to trade with these specific lot sizes, but it should allow you to multiply them by whatever you want. So you should be able to do two mini lots, which would mean what? That would mean every pip would be worth two dollars. You should be able to do as many micro lots as you want. Let's say five, that would mean every pip would be worth 50 cents, so on and so forth. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's now move on to a standard lot. With a standard lot, which is 100,000 units of currency, you will be losing $10 per pip for every pip the market goes against you. So if you get involved with two standard lots and price drops five pips, do the math on that and see if you can figure out how much money you've lost in that case. You have two standard lots, which means every pip is now worth $20. We have to multiply that by our five pips. That means in a situation where you're trading two standard lots and, mar and the market or prices drop five pips, you have now lost $100. Hopefully that makes sense to everyone. It's super simple. And as long as you have this written down beside you, you'll be completely fine. And you'll be able to do all these calculations once I give you the formula really easily and even after you get it memorized, you'll be able to do these calculations even faster. So with this being the case, the best thing to do now is to go ahead and move forward and talk about the formula itself. We've discussed two different things about risk management throughout this video. What are they? They are risk tolerance and stop losses. These are the two things we need in order to calculate our position size along with this table right here. So our formula is gonna go like this. Our risk tolerance, whatever that number is you're willing to lose, divided by our stop loss in pips is going to equal our losses per pip. The amount of money we can stand to lose per pip, which we're gonna use this table to figure out our position size after we get this number. So let's do a figurative trade. Let's say you have a 10K account, and for easy math, you wanna risk 1% of that. If you don't know, which most of you probably do, and most of you can probably do that, in your head, but if you want to figure out what 1% of any number is, you multiply it by 0.01, that'll give you 1%, 0.02 will give you 2%, 0.03, 3%, so on and so forth. Most of you probably already know that, but in this case, we want to risk 1% of this 10K account, which is what? That would be $100. And let's say for this specific trade, our stop loss is 25 pips. So our risk tolerance is $100 and our stop loss is 25 pips. Now, see if you can do the math really quickly. It should not take long at all using this equation to figure out what our losses per pip can be in order for us to be risking $100 on a trade where we have a 25 pip stop loss. We can actually do this on a calculator really quickly to make it super easy. We have a $100 risk, that's our risk tolerance, divided by the amount of pips in our stop loss, which is what? 25, that gives us four. That means $4 is our LPP. So LPP, meaning the amount of money we can lose per pip is $4. Now with this being the case, I want you to look over at our table and tell me what position size you should be using. Remember, we can multiply these position sizes, all of these by any number. So with that being the case, what you would do for a position size, just by using this simple formula and having this table beside you, you could figure this out in seconds. The only thing you need to do is look over here, LPP, and figure out where can I get $4 out of this? Well, it's pretty easy to see that one mini lot times four will give you a $4 risk per pip, $4 loss per pip in this table, right? So the only thing we would have to do is put a position size on this trade of 40,000 units or four mini lots.
And the only reason that seemed like it took a long time is because I was having to write it out with you. We will go through a couple of other examples in case it was confusing, but this is an extremely simple process. Once you do it between five and 10 times yourself, you'll be able to do this in literally less than 30 seconds to figure out the exact position size you need or around about the position size you need in order to place a trade with your own risk tolerance, whatever that may be. So now let's go through a more complicated example. All right, keep in mind our formula that we have on the top here and keep in mind our table we have over to the right. Now let's imagine we have an odd number in our account. Let's say we have $12,252 in our account. Now at this point, you may wanna say, okay, I wanna risk 3% of this, 0.03. We can do that on a calculator. So this is how quickly you can do it. Just come to a calculator, do 12, two, five, two times 0 0.03. That gives us $367.56. This is what? This would be our RT. So if you're willing to risk 3% of your $12,252 account, then you're willing to risk 367 on your total trade, which means this is your RT. So we now have RT or our risk tolerance of 360, that's a terrible three, I know that, $7. We now have a stop loss in pips, let's say of 32, just making up the trade here. We have 32 pips as a stop loss. Now do the equation to figure out what your LPP needs to be. Super easy. We would just take our RT or risk tolerance of $367. We would divide that by our stop loss in pips, which is 32 pips. And we need our risk per pip or our losses per pip to be around $11. Whenever I get a number like this, I just round it down to the nearest dollar amount. If this was 11.6, I would round it up to 12. If it's 11.4, I'll round it down to 11. So now I know that I have an $11 LPP. All I have to do is come over to my table, look at it. We can either do 11 mini lots or you can do one standard lot and one mini lot. What this means essentially is that our position size is going to be 110,000 units, which you should just be able to type into any brokerage account for your position size. But this is the formula you need to use whenever you go to place a trade to ensure that you are sticking to your RT, your risk tolerance, by utilizing your risk tolerance divided by your stop loss in pips in order to give you the losses per pip that you can use on that trade. Once you have that, you look over at your table and after you look at the table, it's gonna show you clearly what position size you need to use just by doing a little bit of math. I can normally do this in under 10 seconds because I've just gotten accustomed to it. So although it may sound a bit complicated right now, I promise doing this eventually will become like second nature and you'll be able to do it in seconds. And if this is just way too complicated for you, you can go to, I'll put the link on the screen. There's a position size calculator that you can get on baby pips and that will do all this math for you so you don't have to do it at all. If that's something you wanna do, that's fine. I normally think it takes a little bit longer to go over to the calculator itself and type in everything I need to type in. So instead of that, I just use this table, or I did before TradingView. TradingView also does all this automatically for you, but that's not what I wanted to talk about today. I wanted to talk about those of you who do not have a broker connected with TradingView, because I know it's a lot of you. I also wanted to give you a good lesson on risk tolerance, stop losses, and how to actually calculate your position size so that your stop loss is equal to your own personal risk tolerance. If you think I did that, go ahead and click that like button if you enjoyed the video. Go ahead and subscribe if you're new. If you want some more advanced training going over the Forex market and you're ready to take another step towards your profitable trading career by investing in your trading future, then we have some space available in the TTC FX University. It would be a pleasure to have you aboard. There's a full training course in that university along with a lot of other supporting factors like the pro trader report showing you the areas of structure I'm looking at for the next week email analysis which is trades I'm actually taking along with priority coaching support which will be me answering any trading related questions that you have so if that's something you're interested in go ahead and click the first link in the description or go to www.ttcfxuniversity.com but if that's not something you're interested in that's completely fine too make sure you're subscribed here and I'll catch you in the next video see you soon